Good day, Grade 12. Welcome to this final lesson on the Doppler effect in Week 14. In this lesson, you're going to be taught about a very important application of the Doppler effect, which is called the redshift. And this is very important as it helps us understand our position, in other words, our planet's position in the entire universe. <laughs> Hello, today's lesson on the Doppler effect will look at the Doppler effect in relation to light and how this shows us that the universe is expanding. In terms of sound, the Doppler effect is the apparent change in frequency of sound due to the relative motion between the listener and the source of the sound waves. The Doppler effect actually applies to all waves. This includes light waves. In respect to light, the Doppler effect is defined as an apparent change in the frequencies of light waves, which leads to a change in color as a result of relative motion between light source and observer. Therefore, in today's lesson, we will look at some fascinating applications of the Doppler effect such as redshifts in the universe. We will compare the movement of stars in terms of the frequencies and wavelength of light emitted. Within this lesson, we will also look at the motion of the galaxies. When a light source moves away from an observer, the observed frequency of light is less than that emitted. Since in terms of light, a shift from higher to lower frequencies is towards the red part of the spectrum. This is called a redshift. Note that this spectrum has lower frequencies on the right hand side. So the redshift is in the direction of the arrow. Similarly, if the source of light moves towards the Earth, frequency increases and the light emitted appears more blue. With the shorter wavelength and higher frequencies, this is called the blue shift. Let's listen to an interview with Marion West, an astronomer as she explains how we know that the universe is expanding and how the redshift and blue shift phenomena occur. Hi Marion, thank you so much for meeting with us. Um, could you tell us more about how the Doppler effect is used in the field of astronomy? Yes, we actually, you can split light into the different colors of the rainbow, it's called a spectrum, and then for the different kinds of molecules in a star like the Sun, you've got molecules like hydrogen and helium, which are the most common elements in the universe. And then you've also got what we call heavier elements. In astronomy, we actually call these metals. But for each element, it will have a particular fingerprint. Now, you don't only have the visible light available to you, but you actually have towards the longer wavelength side, the infrared, which is heat, and the radio waves, and towards the shorter wavelength, higher frequency, you have the ultraviolet, X-rays, and gamma rays. And for each molecule or atom, they will have a particular fingerprint. Now, this comes out either as a bright line in the spectrum, or it can come out as a dark line if the uh, light from that molecule is actually being absorbed by gases higher up. So we can actually tell exactly what kind of molecules are in a star like the Sun. And from the lab, we know exactly where in the spectrum these molecules, the light from these molecules is going to occur. So if a star is moving away from us, you'll actually find that that line that you've been looking at will be shifted towards the, the red, and which is the longer wavelength side. If the star is moving towards us, it'll be shifted towards the blue. So it is a, a Doppler effect like you've been talking about in your program, but actually in the light light region of the spectrum. In other words, if we were to compare the line emission spectrum produced by helium from a discharge tube on Earth, it would look different from the line emission spectrum produced by helium in a distant star? That is very interesting. Um, in our series earlier, we discovered that when the wavelength of a wave is longer than we expected it to be, uh, it meant that the source was moving away from the observer, according to the Doppler effect. Um, does this red shift mean that the stars are moving away from us? Yes, certainly. An astronomer called Edwin Hubble actually discovered that not only are stars moving, well, the stars will be moving towards and away from us because we're all circling around in our galaxy, okay. but now galaxies 
actually um, can be moving towards us or away from us. Now, some of them, we're in a local group of galaxies, so some will be moving towards us and some away. But the further away you look, the more you find that the groups of galaxies are actually consistently moving away from us, which means that the universe is actually expanding. And Edwin Hubble was the first person to actually put the, the facts together with the, the theory. And um, that is really one of the strongest bases of the Big Bang Theory. Could you tell us a little more about the Big Bang Theory and how it is supported by evidence that suggests that the universe is expanding? The whole of the universe was included or, or taken up in this very, very small, high pressure, very hot ball. Um, now, often people think of, well, this ball then expanded into space. But in fact, this ball was space and time and everything that is. So this then expanded. It expanded very, very quickly initially. It, we needed to have expanded very quickly because everything, as far out as you look, things are what we call homogeneous and isotropic. That means that in, in every direction that you look, everything is much the same. You do get clusters of galaxies, but on the larger scale, everything is actually pretty much even. So the universe expanded very, very quickly. And then it actually, obviously, as it expanded, it cooled. And initially, things would have been so hot and the pressure so high that you wouldn't have even had the individual atoms wouldn't have been existing. There would have been quarks and the stuff that make up atoms kind of all in a, in a huge, very hot, very high pressure soup. And then as the universe expanded and cooled, so eventually atoms would have been able to form. But at that stage, things would have still been hot enough that matter would have been turning into radiation and radiation into matter. So you wouldn't actually have been able to see back into that time at all. Eventually, I think after about a billion years, then your atoms and your matter and your radiation would have separated. And at that stage, we could perhaps see back to when the first stars started to form and that sort of thing. We can actually, with our current telescope, see back to when the first galaxies formed, some of the very early galaxies. But we still don't have answers to the questions like, um, when did the did stars form first or did galaxies form first? So the square kilometer array, which they're going to build, is going to try and look back to the very, very early time just after the Big Bang and try and answer those questions. But one of the supporting evidence um, pieces that you are looking for is that wherever we point a radio telescope in the sky, you get a uniform radiation. It's a very cold radiation. Um, if you think about our zero temperature being cold, this is now minus 270 degrees, this radiation. Yeah. So, But it is exactly what theory predicts would be there as the cool down radiation after the Big Bang, because the universe has been around, initially when Hubble did his calculations, the universe came out to be about two billion years old. And that was a problem because we knew that the, some of the rocks on the Earth were about 4.5 billion years old. So the Earth was older than the universe, which mm -hmm. didn't make any sense. But as we've gone on and refined and refined the measurements, we've actually um, now got a value for the age of the universe of 13.6 billion years. So obviously the solar system at 4.5 fits in very well with that. So with all the supporting evidence, we can conclude quite um, clearly that the universe is about 13.6 billion years old and um, that the Big Bang theory is the best theory that we have of the universe at this point in time. From what our astronomers said, a redshift means that stars in our galaxy are moving away from Earth and blue shift means that the stars are moving towards Earth. Note also that a frequency of light increases, the wavelength decreases, so we could also explain the shift in terms of the wavelength of light. Finally, astronomers have observed that other galaxies are moving away from Earth, which means that the universe is expanding. Well, we hope you enjoyed this lesson. Now it is time for you to do the task found on www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Goodbye.